Here's the thing about beekeeping. Eventually, you're gonna get stung. Yep, and there's one in the mouth. <laughs> okay, that hurt. Beekeepers call that earning your stripes. Up the nose is the worst single place to be stung. There is no place worse than up the nose. And I mean no place. You know, pick an area on the body, let your mind go wild. Up the nose is still the worst. That's Andrew Cote. We're about done here. And that's him getting stung up the nose. Cote is intense, and he's super passionate about beekeeping. As the head of Bees Without Borders, he's traveled around the world with his father, Norman, teaching poor farming communities the economic benefits of bees. We've been to many, many places. Moldova, Ukraine, Iraq, Zimbabwe. Nigeria. The group also works locally, maintaining hives that pollinate community gardens and poor neighborhoods. Cote and his father oversee about 240 hives, including a number in front of his home in Norwalk. Outside Cote's house, cars drive past, and some of them stop to gawk as he holds up a frame filled with honey and thousands of bees to the sun. Cote is careful with his bees, and he says he learned a few tricks from his father, like cutting up burlap, which he puts in his smoker, and always keeps burning. He keeps the bees away, and he loves the smell. My father always used to come into the house smelling like that. I find it comforting, and you know, his truck in the driveway, you could really smell it. Inside the hive, 60,000 worker bees incubate eggs and make honeycomb. Most are female. They just work until they die. They literally work their wings off. But a few are male drones who live for one purpose, to mate with the queen. But they can only do it once. They, they won't be able to do it twice. Their apparatus is uh, Ripped off. left oh. behind. Their heart. <laughs> and with mixed emotions, they fall to the ground, <laughs> dead. Dead before they hit the ground. They'd probably do it even if they knew that's what was going to happen, wouldn't you? I mean, At her peak, a queen can lay around 2,000 eggs per day, and as the queen lays more eggs, a hive can run out of room. That's when bees swarm, abandoning their home in search of a bigger place to live. Often that bigger place ends up being a tree in someone's backyard. Cote says he loves getting those calls. An ideal swarm would be on a low-hanging branch, and um, you would just put a bucket or a box underneath that branch and shake it. If the queen is in there, her, her scent will indicate to the other bees where to go. The other bees will follow. Close the contraption and you've got your free bees. You can also find Cote selling his bee products at farmer's markets, but to him, the honey is not about the money. Around here, I would really say the only way to make a small fortune in beekeeping is, is to begin with a large fortune and you just whittle it down. Uh, it, it's really a losing proposition. I mean, if you hate money, you should probably jump into any kind of agricultural pursuit. Even so, I still wondered if I had what it took to be a beekeeper. Like that's a wasp now crawling up your white shirt. Yeah. Not a bee. And they're aggressive, right? Well, she can sting yeah. over and over. Now, waving, waving <laughs> your hands like yeah. that. Is Freaking the, out, it's not going to help. No, it's not helping. For WNPR, I'm Patrick Scahill.